guys, just chill. Don't tell me to comment anymore because, of course, I will do it. Lomix GH7. Me and my neighbor, we know each other like strangers. I'm heading out the wrong door because I've got a deadlock on danger. Please set it to me, celebrate anything. I'll cut up chasing the adrenaline. Yeah. I get a kick from the spike of your eyes in the dark, and the risk is a dangerous feeling. So, this is the very first time to use Lumix GH series. You know, I only know the GH5 made the great YouTube videography era one. So I thought that GH series is for, you know, that kind of content creation, but, but, come on, come on. But this, this GH5 is a little different. It can shoot 5.7K ProRes internally. What? Okay, there's more. Ari Log is available in this. And this is compatible with a CF Express Type B and the standard SD card. Hold on, there's more. Many autofocus detection modes and uh, electronic MA stabilization, same as S52, S52X. And the powerful audio function that S52, S52X don't have. But it's not done yet. This got a decent. 25 megapixel raw photos and this got a continuous shooting like like this and of course the real-time lot shooting same as s9 s52 s52x okay it's too much i didn't expect all of this but i know all you care about is this is a micro four thirds camera and it costs pretty much same as s52 s52x which are full frame what is the point of this camera g87 and who buys this instead of full frame cameras, S52, S52X. You will have the answer that you're looking for after you hit the crux of this topic. How? It's super simple and easy. Watch this video until the end. And first, let's take a look at the build quality and usability. So my instant and honest feeling uh, when I grabbed this camera for the first time was, okay, this is chunky, but that's pretty much the positive thing. You know, this grip is super, massive it's bigger and deeper than s52 i guess the biggest grip i've ever had well it's super close to the canon you know it's rounded and super easy and comfortable to hold i really love this feel and plus the shutter button comes right here so naturally and look at my right thumb right on the recording button and simply the body is thick and it's relatively heavy compared to other mirrorless cameras although this is micro filters camera it's heavier than S52, S52X, which is full frame. There is a reason for that, which I am going to dive deep later. But you know what? This is not a you know, compact, easy vlog cam. So I personally appreciate this massiveness when it comes to the filmmaking. It gives me the solid holding feel. Not only the design, the functionality is so great. Basically, it has the same as S5 series, but this got the audio button right here, which you can have a fine audio adjustment. Also, this got a lock for this mode selection dial. At the left side, same as S5 series, you got a photo dial, and here is the operation lock switch. So you can avoid changing the setting, you know, while you are shooting. I really appreciate this because Lumix cameras have loose shutter dial right here. When something touches this shutter dial, it moves super easily. So this lock switch is pretty much must have function for me. And there are two extra custom buttons right here and another recording button at the front. And this got a ordinary viewfinder, nothing new to me. And the monitor is just like that as well. Well, I was thinking like that until like yesterday. When I was shooting footages for this review, I didn't notice it, but come on, look at this. It can flip, right? But it can tilt. Oh my God, I didn't notice the existence of this until yesterday. So now it totally makes sense why this is thick like this. That's because of this monitor. And it flips and it tilt two step, like one and two. You know, I got used to the flip screen, you know, no matter what I shoot. Like shooting something and shooting myself, you know, like this, you know, vlogging style. But I just realized the monitor should be at the center. When you use the external monitor, you put the monitor at the center of the camera, right? The flip screen will do, of course, but the monitor at the center is more natural, you know, when it comes to shooting 
you know, the front like this. So now let's talk about the interface. But first of all, look at this legit fan. And another one right here. Looks like super reliable. Okay, anyway, the interface is pretty normal. Microphone, headphone, and USB Type-C, and full-size HDMI. But the microphone jack is separated like this. Right side, the CF Express Type-B and one SD card slot. Also, this battery door has a lock like this. And as always, this got a hole for the cable of a dummy battery, just like that. It's a small detail, but it helps me a lot. 93 point out of 100. 3 minus because of the weight. Well, if you change the perspective, this is a really small and compact camera, but in fact, it's heavy and it's big. And 3 minus because of this thing. Why? Why this? You know, <laughs> They're just so annoying. Every time when I hold the camera, it comes right here. And I gotta do like, just replace my hand. I don't get it. I don't think this camera is for that use, like using the sling. I just don't get it. I don't like this. I mean, I don't need it. And one minus, that's for the future developing of their product, you know, for Lumix. Well, they are developing their products. I got it too. Recently, I am learning about the creative business from scratch again, but now I got something new to learn. I mean, I have to learn because a new type of job offers are coming to me a lot lately. But I'm not upset. I know exactly what I have to do because I am with Skillshare. Explore That's your part. creativity. So I've been doing a lot of video works, but not a lot of photography works. Since I post a lot of street photography and studio portrait photography, some people want me to shoot their portrait photography. But as you can see, my friend shoots me like this and I can direct it, but not specialize in uh, shooting in the type of the situation. But I guess some shooting works with that type of situations. So seriously, I am learning the professional mm, studio portrait photography on Skillshare. So Skillshare is the largest online learning community where you can have a thousand of classes across many fields such as photography, videography, design, business, and music, and goes on. And those classes are led by industry professionals. For example, my teacher in this class worked with a GQ. Wow. That's that's awesome. I want to be on this show like a hi everyone. My name is Kensei Akatsu today I'm gonna show you guys my 10 essentials that I can live without even if you don't have foundation and don't know exactly what class you should take the learning path will lead you to your goal it is some kind of bundle that has a curated classes to learn the special skill if you want to learn about the photography but don't know exactly what class you should take this learning path guides you to the right way and the great thing about the skillshare is that there are thousands of classes across many categories such as animation writing film art graphic design and photography the class i'm taking right now is this one portrait photography essentials i actually have that portrait work at the end of July. So I still have some time to level up my skill. If you become the member of Skillshare, you can take any classes and anytime, anywhere. It is always a great time to learn a new skill and to have a new and fresh experience. Nothing is too late to start. So why don't you check it out? The first 500 people to use my link in the description below will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare right now. Is the time. Okay, now let's talk about the biggest and the heaviest topic today image quality. So, first, let's go over the recording options. I always don't like to do this when it comes to Linux because, you know, they have a ton. I mean, in a good way. At max, you can shoot 5.8K photo or 10 bit, 30 FPS, and 60 FPS is available in still. 5.7K without a crop. There are 4.4K, Cinema 4K, and in Cinema 4K, 120fps is available, of course, without a crop. There is a normal 4K, 4 to 10 bit, and 4K, 120fps without a crop as well. And if you're down to the very bottom, there is a full HD 8 bit. That's actually a great option for the light and fast workflow. Okay, did you notice that we've been coming all the way without a crop? That's crazy. Even when it's 4K, 120fps, there's no crop. But the crop is coming to you only when it's 4.4K. Also some codec options like uh, Cinema 4K, 60fps, all eye, 
are not available with an SD card. In the case, you gotta use SSD or CF Express Type B. Okay, that was too much. But now let's take a look at just normal 4K. It's super clean right but i know you want to say something about the color right but don't don't yet because i'm saving it for later come on relax guys so first of all let me talk about 5.7k internal prores raw recording it is absolutely crazy you can record up to 5.7k 30fps prores raw hq inside with cf express or ssd you can't use normal sd card for that so be careful but look how much of color detail this got omg this is a mirrorless camera with autofocus and ibis and not super heavy like a cinema camera it got a good battery life but it can shoot 5.7k raw video inside i know this is not a major option for people in general but the fact that this can do is crazy right this totally can expand your creativity so much now i don't have to use blackmagic 6k or 4k you know every time i need a massive color grading capability although blackmagic raw is still better but prores raw is fantastic filmmaking codec option as well and you just can have it by this by this not this buy this i shot many footages with this codec i don't have a cf express type b because it's uh you know expensive so i used ssd with a super simple rig the filmmaking experience this gave me was pretty close to when i was with a black magic 6k black magic 6k like the feeling of committing to the detail but it's not going super serious because this camera is smarter than cinema cameras and of course lighter smaller but you can have the joy of filmmaking including color grading but there's a catch first of all cf express is expensive ssd is more budget option but when that you gotta have some accessories and second prores raw is not compatible with davinci resolve because you know prores raw is apple and apple has a final cut and blah 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 so anyway you can't import uh, prores raw footages in davinci resolve so you gotta use some raw converter app there is a famous one but since gh7 is a brand new camera now this app doesn't support gh7 but i found the alternative option which is this app a simulate which can convert prores raw to cinema dng so you can import it in davinci resolve i hope things get easier soon but it's a little tricky you gotta use a converter right now but yeah still great feature another great codec color option this got Ari Log. Now I think Panasonic made some contract with Ari. I'm not sure about the detail, but anyway, Ari is the company that makes a cinema camera. But anyway, they are friend, and now we can use Ari Log on this GH7. Come on, look at this. It's just the color depiction, color production quality is crazy good. It's difficult to explain, but I felt it was super easy and smooth to, you know, color grade. When you compare it with a normal V-Log, the way the color comes out is different. Ari Log is a little brighter and the color looks better to me when I apply the same color on both. Always Lumix gives me the goosebump. They makes me feel like so motivated, energetic, and excited about, you know, creativity. That's what I love about Lumix. Of course, it shoots normal vlog. I'm already working on the comparison of uh, GH7 and S52X, so stay tuned. For that although you can go hard on this you still have an easy option real-time lut now you are familiar with it right because of lumix s9 you can do same things on this camera too you can have many lots inside of this camera and apply them on videos and photos it allows you to enjoy the high quality image instantly and easily i'm not diving deep in this because i already did it on lumix s9 video so please check it out so the low light performance can be the biggest concerned when it comes to micro four thirds camera but it's not all bad of course it's not better than full frame cameras especially in a really dark place but if there's a, even a weak light source maybe in the city this can do the job enough i expected the awful result but it can handle until iso 4000 without a you know obvious image quality degradation but when it's over 6000 iso the noise gets rough and obvious and it's getting worse after that but i guess you're not going to use this g87 in that you know situation 
completed darkness without any light. I mean, if that is your style, this is not your option. Maybe you should go for, I don't know, S5 II or maybe in Sony, you know, A7S 3 When we think this is a semi cinema camera, we gotta say this has amazing low light performance. And now let's go over video functions quickly. So like I said, this can do 4K 120 FPS without a crop. And it got Tully Lamp, which is super handy, especially for me to shoot myself by myself. I mentioned this earlier, but this can do SSD recording, same as S52X. So if you can't afford like a one terabyte uh, CF Express, you can use SSD. That's more budget option. And I'm not diving deep in this that much, but this can record like a 32 float audio. I don't know much about audio. And it is compatible with an audio unit like this. So this could be a must have more function feature for some of you guys. And like S9, this got crop to. Actually, there are more, but basically you can think like this can do pretty much the same thing as S52, S52X can do. Probably even more when it comes to video. How about the autofocus and IBIS? I know G8 series cut up bad autofocus before, but this got a phase detection autofocus, which gives you a super fast and reliable autofocus. Same as S5, this has several detection modes, human, animal, plane. I actually did a couple of tests. This performed super well. I just couldn't believe the old version of this camera had a bad autofocus. It's that good. I don't have any complaints about this. And this got electronic IS and electronic IS high mode, same as S5 II, S5 II X, which can reduce the shake a lot. I wasn't sure how the GH IBIS performs before, but this got super strong IBIS and it's natural, not weird. When it comes to the IBIS, I trust Lumix so hard. The last thing is photography performance. Although this is a monster video machine, it has a legit photography performance. First of all, it has 25 megapixel legit quality of raw photo. You know what? I hated this shadow sound before, like, like this. But now it sounds kind of cute to me. Yeah, not that bad. It's giving me kind of chill and calm vibe. Yeah, not that bad. Also, this got continuous shooting so you can handle the high speed shooting. And like I told you before, this got real time LUD function so you can enjoy the high quality photography easily and instantly. But the actual performance and result are so good. And, and maybe this is because of the grip and the body size, but the actual holding feel is so good, which makes the whole photography experience so rich. It gives me the immersive shooting feel. So I don't know if I can call this as a like a hybrid camera, but yeah, as a matter of fact, this got a good photography performance and at least this is enough for me. Okay, this is it. Man, I love this camera so much. But at the same time, I also think this is not a major option for most of you guys, maybe. Because usually, we don't need a 5.7K ProRes RAW recording. So for most of you guys, I would recommend like S5 II or S9 if it's Lumix. This GH7 is semi cinema camera. It is very close to the Blackmagic 4K and maybe to the 6K in terms of the codec options, image quality, color grading capability, and the body strength and the filmmaking and the immersive shooting experience so that you can have a big motivation to commit to the detail. That is huge to me. So if you see this camera as just a modern mirrorless camera, maybe you can see the true crux of this product. You know, this is micro four thirds, heavy, chunky, and it costs pretty much the same as S5 II, which is full frame camera. It doesn't make any sense. But if you see this as a semi cinema camera, that is the evolution. You can carry the cinema with this size, weight, and easiness, and versatility. So if you want to jump into the filmmaking, not, not like a casual videography, this might be the fantastic option for you. And definitely this will be uh, one of my main cameras uh, for this KA YouTube channel. Why is this? There is always a reason why this is it. Why is this full frame camera so compact? Why is this APS-C micro four thirds camera so big? There is always a reason.
can get it. Okay, this is it. If you have any questions, just shoot me anytime, anywhere. And if you like this video, show me a thumb and the hit to subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Linux S52X G87 and now Blackmagic 6K. Existence of this camera. I got lost. Stay tuned for that topic too. Jump on.